Welcome back everyone. This is part two of the world's most dangerous waves. We're going to give you another five most dangerous waves because the last video, um, I didn't realize how hard it was going to actually be to put together all those waves and you guys wanted another video in the comment section of that last video. There was a lot of controversy between waves and waves that I didn't bring up. So I figured this could be a follow up to that video. I still am going to stick with my ranked most dangerous waves from that last video from five to one but here are the extra ones that i'm going to break down for you guys right now so if you guys could like this video subscribe to the channel turn on notifications that would be amazing and we'll hop right into it with number five on the list is cloud break in fiji and one of the reasons that this wave is so dangerous is because it is so powerful and that is going to be the theme with a lot of waves i bring up today is the power of these waves and cloud break is one of those waves that you when it hits you mainly i'm just talking about being caught inside because you get caught inside there so often but when it hits you it feels like a truck just runs you over and it's impossible to duck dive especially on those big days and you get washed so far in into this like shallow reef so you'll pretty much be surfing a 30 foot wave and then all of a sudden you're just on the sharpest shallowest reef you've ever seen hoping someone can come and get you on a jet ski if not you just got to take them on the head um a few cotton sides i've had or even falls there i've been lucky enough to get picked up and yeah that is one of the things that makes this wave so so dangerous Another thing with cloud break is that it is kind of far from any like doctors you could say. The closest doctor would be on the island of Tavarua, which is where we typically stay. And it's just an in-house doctor kind of. They've seen some shit, that's for sure. But there's no major hospital kind of right there. It's a far boat ride out from anywhere you go from the main island or Tavarua or Nemotu, any of those little islands. But yeah, it's it's remote, it's third world. It doesn't feel like it though when you're staying on Tavarua, but that is also a huge factor. Another thing that adds danger to this wave, to me, in my opinion, um, is the wind. It can be very, very windy. And sometimes when it's that windy on a big wave, when you're paddling into it, you get hung up or you're not far enough down the wave. So you stand up a little too early. And then sometimes if the wind gets caught under your board, you just go flying and usually you like fall sideways down the face and so you skip a bunch of times into like the lip which is you never really get blown up and out which it is common but a lot of times you fall sideways you're like in the air and you just skip 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 into the lip and the long hold downs because it's just it's such a long playing field that if you get caught, if say you fall and you get caught just in the cycle of it, like going down the reef, it can just keep you under for a long time. And one of the times we were there, we actually saw some crazy stuff. One of our really good friends and amazing big wave surfer who's been surfing his entire life, we watched him get a three wave hold down, ended up going unconscious and then he had to be brought back to life. So. The wave is no joke, and for anyone who surfed it when it's big, will tell you that it is definitely one of the most powerful, dangerous, scary waves in the world. All right, real quick, you guys, before we hop back into the video of the world's most dangerous waves part two, I wanted to introduce you guys to NordVPN, which is a VPN service that changes your IP address to a different place. Their mission is to make the internet free from censorship online threats and surveillance. So I really like them. But one of my biggest things I love because I travel so much with NordVPN is I can be in a certain place and switch my VPN to being back in America and I can stream all the stuff I was streaming back in America because some places don't have the same things online. Like if you're in Europe or Asia somewhere, they don't have the same things say on Netflix as they do here in the States and America and vice versa. Sometimes when I'm here, I want to see what's going on in Japan on some streaming platforms and I'll go change my um, VPN to say Japan while I'm here in America and get to watch like their top 10 shows or movies, obviously with subtitles or something else. But it's, 
it's really cool. So if you guys would like to get NordVPN, head to NordVPN forward slash Koa VPN to get your four months extra on a two year plan at that same link, nordvpn.com forward slash Koa VPN. It's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. So go check them out. Thanks for watching. Let's hop back into the video. With the research I have done, coming in at number four is Cortez Bank in California. I have not personally been there, which is probably one of the reasons why I didn't bring it up in a previous video or some of the waves coming up weren't in that video were because well, it's because I didn't want to speak on anything that I haven't experienced myself. But from all the research I've done and everything I've heard about this wave, it is definitely up there with one of the most dangerous waves in the world. And the reasons are, for one, it's 100 miles out to sea, so it takes over six hours to get out there by boat. And if you get injured that far out anywhere, you have to have a medevac come and get you. I'm talking about like a serious injury, which there has been, I think, quite a few. I don't even want to, I'm not sure if people have passed away there. I hope not, but I know some people have died and been brought back to life. Some very, very experienced big wave surfers. Another thing is this wave being so far out to sea, it's such an open ocean wave. So I can only imagine the power in the middle of the ocean that is just hitting what has to be a reef shelf. So it's gotta be very powerful and I'm assuming very unpredictable from what I heard as well, which adds to every dangerous factor you could imagine. And on top of that, it's cold and it's in California where there is great white sharks. So yeah, not a good scenario. I've also been told and what I've seen that it could be one of the biggest waves in the world, which comes with a lot of power. And when you wipe out on one of the biggest waves in the world, you there's a lot of risk and a lot of force being put onto the human body. So yeah, Cortez Bank coming in at number four, in my opinion. I have not been there though. So I could go there one time and be like, well, that's number one. All right, coming in at number three is Shipstern's Bluff in Tasmania. I have been there once. It was not as big as it usually is or the clips you usually see out there online. But obviously you just gotta take one look at one of these waves and be like, that wave could kill you. And definitely is up there with the most dangerous waves in the world. And I am going through this list again I had this problem last time in the last video. It is tough to put a number on all these waves. So I think in this video, it's just like, I'm trying to put a number on them. They're all dangerous in their own way and they're all big waves. Shipstern's Bluff is one of the craziest, most mutant looking slabs I have ever seen in my life. I was there when it was about like maybe 10 feet and it was still spooky and scary, which is like reasonable for that wave. but. The wave gets like 40 to 50 feet and every single wave it looks like, except for maybe one out of a thousand waves I see there, has this crazy step that just comes out from the middle of the wave. Like someone will be towed in or paddling in and they'll be going down the wave and then all of a sudden they're just flying in the air. Like everyone hits that step. And that's because of the way the reef is shaped. There's gotta be something there that creates that little wave within that wave. So, when you look at this wave, you're like, wow, that is one of the most shallow waves on the planet. And those guys down there that surf it, the Tasmanian people and the Australians are just absolutely crazy because they'll go on anything. There's no like uh, reading of the wave. There's no, they're just like the biggest wave I want it. I don't even care if it's going to close out as to where I'm like, I want a good, perfect wave. But those guys, when we were there, they were definitely not scared to go on anything. And the waves I see them go on are crazy but yeah so what makes this place so dangerous is obviously that shallow reef and all the energy from that wave just blowing up right on it and if you're a human i know people have gotten super super messed up there broken backs broken eardrums just everything you can think of i don't know if people have died i'm not even going to talk about that I don't even want to talk about that because it's just scary, but the water is freezing, especially certain times of year. They were telling me that Hawaii boys can't even handle it. So they're like, you can't even come certain at certain points of the year because the water is so cold. It's right there next to Antarctica, which makes it cold. 
there's huge great white sharks and you always hear of shark attacks in Australia and Tasmania is just right there so I'd assume it's the same thing the biggest sharks in the world right there which just adds to a lot of the danger factor of most of these waves this wave is also in a super remote location just like pretty much all of these waves it's just for some reason so hard to get to them but that again will add to the danger factor like this wave in particular when we were there for the contest we had to get on a boat at like 3.30 in the morning to just to be able to get there for like an eight o'clock start of this event. So it was like a three and a half hour boat ride in freezing weather and they said it wasn't even as cold as it usually is. But yeah, it's far away, which means if you get hurt and you're, there's no doctors or whatever on hand, like you gotta get rushed to a hospital, but it's not gonna be very fast. That is a huge factor that plays into the danger of this wave. Obviously, the power, the shallowest reef ever, maybe. So that was Shipsterns Bluff coming in at number three. Again, you guys, leave a comment of your opinion, like this video, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps. Let me know if you like videos like this. Number two on our list is Puerto Escondido in Mexico. It is probably one of the biggest, most dangerous beach breaks on the planet, if not the most besides Nazare, some of the factors that make this wave so dangerous for me, I've been there a ton of times, is, I wanted to bring this up before I forgot, but there's this, when, you've, when you're at a beach break, for some reason, there's a lot more foam in the water than a normal reef break. I don't really know the reason why that is, but it could be because beach breaks develop little points of sand everywhere, and so it brings these peaks pop up everywhere but where those when those waves come in on those peaks they flush out all the water that way and I think when they flush out like that it creates all this foam but sometimes there'll be like this brown thick layer of foam anyway what I'm getting at is when you fall on a wave or you get caught inside and you come up from being underwater sometimes you'll be in like this thick two feet of foam maybe so when you're trying to get a breath you're breathing in this foamy salt water sand like it's awful i actually have a very vivid memory of me and nathan florence we talked about this on our podcast actually we're there and we both caught a wave ended up right next to each other and then get kept getting caught inside and at one point i was just about 10 feet away from him and i pop up and i look over and nate's stuck in this foam and all i can see is his little fingers at the top of this foam trying to come up to get a breath before the next wave we had to go under and I started paddling over to him because I was like, oh my God, Nate's drowning. <laughs> but he really just couldn't get to the surface to get a full breath of air. And luckily, I didn't get to him before that next wave hit us. He got smoked, we got smoked, and then popped up and we're okay. So yeah, the foam there is just like something I've never seen before. Same with Nazareth. Porto has these crazy rip currents again because it's that beach break, so they just you think you know where the, what the current's doing when you paddle out and you're like, oh, okay, it's going that way. And then all of a sudden you hop in and you're down the beach a different way. It's just super, super strange the way the currents work there and which makes it very dangerous and unpredictable. So Porto Escondido is in Mexico and it's a third world country and they don't have the same access, I'd say, we have here in Hawaii or in America to the same safety equipment. It's hard to get jet skis down there um, the lifeguards don't have the same like plethora of life-saving equipment, but they are getting better down there because so many people are surfing there and they're getting better at saving lives at the moment. But the lack of safety equipment down there is definitely a huge factor of what makes this wave so dangerous and number two on our list. It's also one of those waves that have, say you're just sitting there and it's really slow and a set comes through. That set could have anywhere from 20 to 40 waves in it sometimes it feels like. And if you're on the wrong side of that set and you're getting caught inside or you fall on the first wave, you're just getting so many waves on the head. And a lot of times there when it's big, the wave doesn't push you in towards shore. It pulls you straight into the impact zone. So you're trying to just get in and the wave and the current is just sucking you straight into the worst spot. So not only are you getting 
these long sets on the head, you're getting them in the impact zone. It just keeps you right there, just destroying. And yeah, that's my experience there. So, Port Escondido, definitely number two. All of these waves could be the most dangerous wave in the world, you know. So, yeah, we'll move on. Coming in at number one on part two of the world's most deadly, dangerous waves, whatever you want to call it, is the right in Australia. And pretty much, we just have to show you a clip of this wave and you'll understand why. It is like the most scary, evil looking wave I've ever seen. I have not personally been there, but I've heard enough stories and saw enough clips that I don't even know if I have the desire to go there at the moment. Obviously, if the opportunity presented itself and I was in Australia and it looked like a good swell was coming, I'd go down there with a good group of guys that I trusted and I've heard that pretty much 80% of the time you fall on the wave there, you're going to break your eardrum. Just because when the wave comes in, it has no back. So it looks like the ocean, the sea level is, it looks like sea levels here and then all of a sudden there's this tidal wave up here. Whereas most waves have a back and they stand up like that and there's, it goes up and down. But this wave, here's the bottom of the wave. Here's the top of the wave. It just goes back. There's no, there's no end to the wave. So when you go down, just this huge mass of just pretty much tidal wave energy is just goes straight over you and within seconds. It puts you under so much pressure that it can bust your eardrum. And from what I've heard, this wave is in the middle of absolutely nowhere that some people even have to camp, I guess for, just on the beach, like near where you gotta take the ski out. I guess it's easier. I can't imagine you couldn't find a place to stay, but that's just what I've heard. Um, it is just, looks like a slab in the middle of the ocean, pretty much like this giant reef popped up in the middle of the ocean and just these huge storms, just full of so much energy, just hit it directly. And yeah, it's just, the most scary looking slab, most unpredictable thing. It seems like the reason I say it's unpredictable is because of the waves I see people going on. Experienced surfers who know what they're doing are going on some of these waves that there's no back to the wave and it's this giant wave and all of a sudden it's not even barreling here. It's just a giant foam ball and they're just like coming down the line into just, oh, I don't even, it's, I don't know. It doesn't even look real the power that wave must have that I don't really want to find out how much power it has. It just is, it's really mind blowing what the ocean can do and what people's bodies can endure. So yeah, that is number one on the list of most dangerous waves. I hope you guys like this video and yeah, subscribe to the channel again, leave any comments below your thoughts on videos like this, your thoughts on this video, your thoughts on the order of the waves. Yeah. Subscribe. Thanks for watching. Real quick, we have a bonus wave for you. I didn't know where to put this wave because it's not, to me, one of the most dangerous waves in the world, but it is a very dangerous wave and it is Waimea Bay right here down the road from my house. And it's pretty much like if you're surfing Malibu with all those kooks on big, way, on big surfboards, just went out to a giant, massive outer reef wave and decided to surf it. Yeah, so it's, we'll put a couple clips in here. It's just, it's madness mainly because of the people it's actually a really good wave and i heard guys used to be able to pull in there and get barreled but now with all the people it's not even an option you just go straight so yeah bonus why may i be